now that we have reviewed a number of concepts regarding errors and become familiar with them, let's review some techniques to help us plan for and work with errors in our process design. The try-catch shape is the most common way to handle exceptions in your process. It captures all types of document level and process level errors for one or more documents that fail during an execution. The goal of the try-catch step is to prevent errors by capturing them so that you can act upon them later or retry documents that have errors. Uh, what's a retry scenario? Well, maybe you have something like a flaky FTP connection that usually works, but every once in a while, depending on network traffic, it's just dead. But if you wait a few seconds and then try again, it will probably work. The retry field addresses this kind of issue. You can specify the maximum number of times a failed document is retried through the try path. So the first retry occurs immediately following the first document failure and subsequent failures are incremented by 10 seconds between retries. And the exception of that is the fifth retry, which waits a full 60 seconds before retrying the final time. So you can see that the try-catch shape allows you to be creative in handling potential errors. So how does this shape work? The try-catch must be placed before the main processing shapes in your process. Then all documents are sent down the try path. Any document that fails is caught and sent down the catch path, no matter how far it has traveled down the try path. So any successful completed steps along the true path will not be rolled back. If you use multiple try catch steps, the nearest try catch step handles the failure. The catch path executes only after all documents have completed the try path. As you recall, this is the way that documents flow in Boomi. Each path is completed sequentially before the next path can begin. So this allows the design of advanced logging and processing for failed documents. You can send alerts or file away the data or documents that have failed. And it allows you to capture the exception logged within the original try. You can record and send this captured message and access it through the parameter reference to the base document property. If there are no failures, then documents will not flow down the catch path at all. The try catch shape can be configured to catch process level and or document level errors. So within the shape, the failure trigger setting is how this is configured. In the screenshot here, it's set to document errors. So these are some of the errors that would be caught when this shape is set to document errors. That would be for connectors that log errors for specific documents when an error occurs. So an example of that might be uh, an update operation fails because the document has an invalid ID. The exception step uh, that has the stop single document checkbox turned on would also be caught here. These shapes allow you to create your own logic for errors. We'll review that uh, shortly. And when the option is enabled to stop single document, just that one failed document will be caught as an error. Another error that could be caught is a map shape that does not produce any output or generates a validation error or generates a connector error. This could happen when maps are not configured properly or data does not fit the profile definitions. To catch process level errors, the failure trigger needs to be set to all errors and then the shape will catch all errors, be they document or process level errors. So this might include a null pointer exception and similar process level errors that would indicate invalid connectors. Uh, this would also include an exception shape that has the stop single document checkbox turned off. So when you have that turned off in that shape, you are indicating that this error is a process level error. Uh, some applications don't deal with errors very nicely. So some connectors can cause a full exception error to be thrown back to the process instead of capturing the error internally and logging it per document. So that's a very specific connector behavior for just some applications. So that was catching errors after they happen, but we also want to consider how to validate our data so that we can handle errors before they happen. There are several validation techniques that can be utilized to help us avoid errors. You can use the decision shape to route documents based on comparative values for a single element. And you can use this to compare any two values, 
and it's often used to check on required fields to assure that they are not null or are not already present in the endpoint application. The route shape can be used to conditionally send documents down user-defined paths based upon the value of a user-specified field. Documents not matching the field will be sent down the default path. So imagine a scenario where a status could be set to active, inactive, or left as null. The route shape allows you to evaluate this field and send documents down different paths to be transformed or maybe queried for missing data, which may have caused an error, uh, before doing any further processing. The business rule shape works with the profile structure of the document and then applies user-defined business rules to accept or reject the document. For batch documents with multiple records, the business rule shape iterates through the whole document to accept or reject the entire document. To process each record individually, you would need to split your batch document prior to the business rule shape. The cleanse shape enables you to evaluate document field values according to profile data definitions in order to determine whether to repair or reject the document before further processing. This table provides a quick reference guide to some of the characteristics of the different validation options and the scenarios in which they can be useful. So you can see that multiple tests can be run both with business rules and cleanse shapes. The business rule shape alone allows for customized error messages. Uh, they all provide branching for handling comparisons, but for a single test with simple syntax, the decision shape is best. And lastly, the cleanse shape alone has the ability to repair data. Another technique is to use an exception shape. It will terminate the data flow down a path and allows you to define custom error messages that will show up in the process reporting view and in email alerts. And it is often used with the route or decision step when a document does not meet specific criteria. The custom error message in the exception shape can be a mixture of static and or dynamic content so that you can produce some truly helpful error messaging by capturing some relevant data, maybe like a business ID or name in your message. So this dynamic content is populated using parameters and these parameters can be data elements from the document the system date time, static values, or even results from a query. Here are the exception properties that can be configured. This is the stop single document option, which we have referred to several times. If the checkbox is checked, then the exception will only stop the specific document. But if it is unchecked, the exception step will throw a process level error and stop all documents and the process. Here is where you can have a combination of static and dynamic data to create a custom error message. And of course, this is the area to define your parameters. Another helpful shape is the notify shape, which can also build out messages, but this one does not throw an error or stop processing. Rather, it enables you to build custom execution logs and or send customized messages via email alerts or RSS feed. Like the exception shape, the notification shape can create messages that are either static or dynamic or a mixture of both by using input parameters. The notify shape creates one or more notifications per document for each process execution. Or data can also be aggregated into a single message and then sent to the user's email or RSS feed after the process is completed. The notify shape is meant to be used in line within a process because it doesn't alter documents or data that flows through it and is designed to read in any relevant document fields or properties and then pass that document along to the next step for further processing. So here are the notify properties that can be set. First, set the message level information that you want. The message body can be made up of static and dynamic content. The parameters are created using the curly brackets. You can enable events, makes the notify visible in the account event log. Enable user log writes the notify message to the local atom file. When checked, the write once per execution option batches the notify messages into one single message. Let's consider some best practices for error handling. So let's consider some goals in your error handling design. You certainly want to ensure that correct data is being transferred. We also want to minimize interruptions by being able to catch and handle errors. We want to quickly resolve problems so that we can be notified and understand what the problems are. 
We want to ensure successful recovery when we do encounter issues. Of course, we want to maintain data integrity for the data that's flowing through our processes. We want to communicate this status to any responsible parties. And lastly, we want to invest some appropriate effort. We don't want to over-invest in error handling or over-engineer the process, but we do want to be aware of errors and have a plan to be able to handle them. This table gives a quick cheat sheet view of common scenarios and which error handling techniques to consider in each case. So along the left are some common considerations and across the top are some appropriate responses. I'm not going to take the time to review the entire table, but I would encourage you to pause the video and take a look at the information presented here. So how about the default option? What if you do nothing? So here are a couple of pros to this approach. There's no additional development and testing that's needed. Uh, users with Boomi alerts configured can get document and process errors delivered to their emails. This will also keep processes simpler and reduces the development effort. Of course, some cons are that the business users who can fix data errors don't get notified, or maybe IT operations is in the middle of every error that might happen. This approach also lacks selectivity. Everyone gets alerted on every error on every process. So the default approach may be appropriate if data errors are not a serious problem and the only errors that occur are connectivity errors that the IT operations team must address. Different processes require different recovery techniques, and so ask yourself the following diagnostic questions. What are the different types of errors that might be encountered in your process? Are they document level? Are they process level? Does it regard the data or does it regard the connections? How likely and severe are these errors? How often might they occur? What are the implications of not taking any action on that error? What's the recovery process? Can the process be rerun or is the source data easily available for a rerun? Are there partial updates or corruption issues to consider when the data flows through a branch but then can't be rolled back? What will the recovery team need? What kind of details do you need for that error? Do you need a copy of source documents? Or can you rerun the version of the process? What kind of documentation or recovery steps need to be considered? And lastly, how will the process store or save resources that are needed for recovery?